What is going on guys, MJ2005 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the real grade Force Impulse Gundam from Gundam Sea Destiny. The second stage series equivalent of the Ale Strike Gundam, it is the general purpose silhouette pack that adds a set of beam sabers to the impulse and grants it high mobility and atmospheric flight capabilities. Inside the box you'll find yourself with 13 runners and a sizable decal sheet, and for a real great price that 3000 yen, the build is awfully simple. Don't get me wrong, it still features the more involved build elements like the full inner frame, two-tone armor panels, small parts, and heavy undergate use. But in general, the difficulty teeters between advanced high grade and average real grade territory. In other words, it is perfectly viable as an entry level real grade kit. While the simplicity feels more welcoming, yet involved enough to neither distract it from being a real grade, nor tedious enough to turn me away. Overall, it's the standard modern real grade experience, a smooth build with no major hiccups nor obstacles. Straight assembly completes and you'll be presented with 4 components. The chest and leg flyers are mostly static units and look quite iffy with a full paint job since the powered down form hides most of the dodgy silhouette. Regardless, they have their custom stand adapters for their separate displays and accurately represents each of their components. I do like the new covered up head for the chest flyer though. Next is the Core Splendor, which is a tiny plane with an opening canopy and optional landing gear. Featuring full color separation, missiles on the wings, a hole for attaching a base, and a great amount of surface detail, including a tiny seat for the cockpit. Though, as rightfully pointed out by Kakarot197, it doesn't feature all the small color details as per the line art. I'll chalk that up to real great design liberties instead of being an actual discrepancy, but feel free to add those back in. Finally, the silhouette flyer is just a nose cone attached to the silhouette pack like a miniature sky grasper. Regardless, it looks good and features a hole in the bottom for use with an action base. But with that out of the way, it's time to dock the components. Cue the music. First, detach the missiles of the core splendor and fold the wings and nose cone in. Next, take the leg flyer and open up the clip for the splendor to connect and solidly lock into place before folding its fuselage down and straightening the legs and toes. Then, connect the chest flyer, unfold and collapse the shoulders while straightening the arms, spinning the shield, and folding down the chest plate to reveal the head. Finally, detach the silhouette flyer and retract its connector, flip the beam sabers up, and connects the force silhouette onto the Gundam's back, before finally expanding the shield to form the Force Impulse Gundam. Docking complete and weapons set aside, the real great Force Impulse Gundam looks absolutely impressive. Color separation has been used to the max to replicate the multitude of paint ass for the original design, as well as implement a two-tone white that is just distinct enough to discern. Attention to detail is also great, with all the surface etchings and notches in the armor panels, as well as the venting in and around all the major thrusters and exhaust being visible to the naked eye, which will look even better if you decide to bring them out with panel lining. Of course, being a real grade, design liberties were taken, most notably the enlarged wings of Vfin giving off a fiercer silhouette. While the face reflects the angry look you see before you get stabbed in the abs very well, as if the kit actually harbors some underlying anger. The rich colors akin to the anime line art also helps in regards to its looks, but as a whole, there isn't really anything that is necessary to touch up the real Great Force Impulse Gundam, so it is presentable stock as it is. Articulation starts with a flexible wall and neck joint for the head, though the color is a minor hindrance. The shoulders are on a double lateral hinge, as well as a vertical hinge from the transformation, while on a rotating peg joint. The top shoulder panel can move out of the way of the somewhat obstructed arm raise, compensated for by the extendable shoulders. There's a bicep and forearm swivel, double jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. Torso crunches consist of a chest swivel, while the waist rotation is understandably restricted. All the skirts are on ball joints, while the legs can drop down together with no limit, allowing for maximum crotch thrust while steering the legs clear for full splits towards any direction. There is a thigh swivel, double jointed knees with some shifting knee armor, 
a moving calf thruster, ball joints and ankle armor, as well as ankles that can pivot at three points, and perform ballet. Finally, the main thrusters of the silhouette pack can move individually, the beam saber holsters, and the middle and lower wings are all ball jointed, while the middle wings can also fold, and the lower wings features a tiny opening thruster. Articulation of the real grid force impulse is very flexible, given the confines of the core block gimmick they had to work with, and if you're worried that this is another GP01, rest assured that it's a very solid structure, to the point where it can stand with the pack without much issues, though the lower wings can serve as great supports if need be. In terms of gimmicks, the kit features an opening cockpit hatch that is quite hard to access without tools, with an included Shin Asuka pilot figure, the last of the standard real grace to include the latter. For accessories, you get a pair of fists, open hands, holding hands, a trigger finger hand, and another left holding hand without the peg in the palm. The last one is for use with the mobile shield, while featuring a deployable handle for the kit to hold onto. Although being just for show and plugged into the forearm as the grip itself is not that strong. There is also a beam rifle that features a movable scope and foregrip, and can suddenly peg into the trigger finger hand for some solid use, or be plugged onto the rear skirt with a deployable peg for storage. On a related note, the folding razor anti-armor knives are securely pegged into the opening hatches of the side skirts. They flip out like a switchblade and can be suddenly pegged into the holding hands for use. Could have used a white blade like those on the strike though. But if that's too underwhelming, the beam sabers on the force silhouette can be used with the included SB-13 beams for a more traditional melee alternative. Finally, by using the stand adapter used for the light flyer, you can prop the entire kit up on an action base for aerial displays. When I first saw the announcement of the real Great Force Impulse Gundam, I thought to myself, why is there a need for such a release, since the high-grade Cosmic Era kit was good enough already? Little did I know, I came to enjoy the sharper looks of the kit, and the docking mechanic that failed miserably in previous real grades, solid enough to not only work properly, but keep my ADHD brain very entertained, especially with the music playing in my head. Beyond that is what you would expect from a modern real grade. Crazy aesthetics, sturdy structure thanks to its own custom inner frame, and fully functional gimmicks that are solid to mess with. Is it worth twice the price of the high Greek cosmic era kit? Eh, it depends, but on its own, it definitely embodies the excitement of every single time the Sortie Impulse theme song plays. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys, Bye bye